I will show you how to take urban scenes and transform them into new 360 designs using AI. Utilizing the shape of a building from an existing photo and guiding it using stable diffusion AI, a large variety of styles can be quickly tested. 360s have been for a long time a quick and effective alternative to building 3D scenes as they can provide immersive experiences without a model or technical setup. The added benefit is that they can be viewed both in a web browser and with any standard VR headset. For this workflow, a base 360 image of your space is needed. These can be taken yourself with devices such as a 360 camera in any urban or interior environment you would like to transform. These handheld 360 devices such as the Recoff Beta are easy to set up and can be remotely activated through just your smartphone. For this example, I'll use a stock 360 image that you can find plenty online. I'll select this dilapidated urban scene with some rundown buildings which have seen better days and see how we can rejuvenate this space. Next step is to run the AI algorithm. We'll be using the stable diffusion with control net extensions, which I've shown how to use and install in a previous video, so please take a look at that first. Essentially, this video will explain that there are two main ways to run stable diffusion. One is on the cloud with a paid service such as Run Diffusion, and the second is to install and run locally using GitHub, and then clicking the web URL to run it locally on your browser. With this up and running, there are two essential extensions needed, which might not be ready installed, but it's very easy to do. The first is to call your additional networks. For this, go over to the extension tab, click on the available tab, and scroll down to find the Koya additional networks and hit install. In the install tab, you need to press the apply and restart UI for this to refresh. In exactly the same way, type in control net under extensions, select this option and hit install. Download two trained models from the net to be used with this. The first is to go to civitai.com and download the latest Labs 360 model which is trained on 360 images as expected. This needs to be pasted into your stable diffusion folder if running locally, under models and in the lower folder. The second model is the realistic vision trained AI model, which again, as the name suggests, is trained to give more photorealistic results. This is optional, but I found it provided good results for architectural imagery. For this, go to Hugging Face website and download this checkpoint. Then go back to your stable diffusion folder under models and under stable diffusion, paste this file here. Now you're ready to get going with your image generation. In your main stable diffusion AI, head over to the right side of the screen. Under the generate button, there's a tiny icon in the middle. Click this button and then you can go over to the lower tab and you see the Layton Labs 360 model here. Click on this and text will appear at the start of your prompt to enable 360 generation. You can also load the Realistic Vision 2 checkpoint model from the top here if you like, or keep the default 1.5 checkpoint. Hit that same tiny button again on the right to return to the main UI, and it is time to add the base image. Click the Control Net tab under the Additional Network section. Here you can drag and drop your base 360 image. Press the Enable button and add the depth option to both the model and the preprocessor. This essentially creates a depth map on which the image acts as a guide to help the AI keep a similar space and form. If you wish for the AI to follow the images less, you can move the control weight slider to a lower value. Selecting the tile checkbox is also very important as it creates the seamless images with this. Resize model can be set to just resize and the width and the height of the image should be a two to one proportion. If you have a good GPU, Set the width to 2048 and the height to 1024. The final step involves adding both positive and negative prompts. Similar to my previous video, add a description of what you would like to see along with the style and quality. So here I would like to try a modern, contemporary, concrete residential building. Then just hit the generate button. You can see that it follows the form of the building very well, with modern looking windows and concrete texture. However, the foreground has a strange mix of grass and concrete. As always, AI generation is an iterative process, so keep amending the prompts 
and add them to the negative props to remove unwanted elements. I'll fast forward this process, but you can see that I'm changing the materials and the foreground and adding some architectural styles such as Jipperfield, Zahadid and Kengokuma. Also feel free to change the sampling methods to get different results and change the sliders for the CFG scale and control weight. The lower the value to the CFG scale, the more freedom the AI has to invent and the lower the value on the control weight, the less the AI sticks to the original form of the input image. So these help vary the results greatly. As you can see, the results are far from perfect, so there's always a need for manual amendments at this point. One way is to selectively change areas using an in-paint feature. Once you've generated an image you like, you can press the Send in-paint button underneath the image, which then passes this image to the in-paint tab. Here you can brush over the areas which you would like to edit. Now just change the prompt to what you'd like to change. Here, for example, I want to add a Japanese garden, and then hit generate again. This way you can iterate over just the selected parts as many times as you like. The next few sections are additional workflows to upscale your image and view them within your VR headset. Within the UI, under the extras tab, there's a useful option to batch upscale all your generated images. Set the resize scale to four so that all the images will become 8K resolution and select the upscaler model and enter the current size of the images, which is 2048 by 1024. If you click on Batch from Directory option and paste in the file path to your folder of the generated images, and then an output path, you can resize everything all at once. Hit Generate and they will all save out automatically. In this final section, I will show you how to view the image in VR. For this, you need to add some metadata to the images so that the VR headset will recognize automatically that these are 360 images. For this, go over to exifvixart.com and download this app to inject the metadata into our 360s. Once downloaded and run, it's a simple matter of dragging and dropping the images into the app and hitting the Add Metadata button. I'll be using the Oculus Quest 2 headset for this VR experience, although you can do this with any headset. Just plug the Oculus into the PC with a cable, and within the Downloads folder in the Quest 2, paste all our generated 360s. After that, put on your headset and click the TV button on the bottom bar of your home screen. On the central UI screen, there's a middle button which says Your Media. Press this, and you can find all the 360s you uploaded. Since we injected the 360 metadata into the images, Oculus will automatically detect these as a 360 experience. So all you need to do is click and load. Here you can see our dilapidated base image. And if we move to the AI generated images, you can see how these buildings transform. This way you can move between all your 360 images to compare the various styles one next to each other. These images were produced very quickly and with minimal editing. So you can see errors, for example, in the texturing or some of the corners in the buildings. However, with a bit more iteration and Photoshop edits, you can see how useful this workflow is to create proposals for rejuvenated existing spaces. You can see the distinctive changes between options and could be a useful workflow to dismiss or pick styles that immediately grab your attention. The example here has been of an outdoor space. However, it works just as well for interior space, which could be used for renovation. The process of taking a real space and generating potential options to be viewed immersively is one that has great potential in the future. I'm sure that actually in the near future, this AI generation will happen within an XR environment on the fly, to provide quick generations within an interactive environment to drive decision making. I'll be making more videos about the use of AI and technology in design, so be sure to take a look. Thank you.